My name's Elizabeth and I'm a marine biologist, but I'm also a scientific communicator here on YouTube and, very importantly for this video, an illustrator. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my prompt list for Inktober, a challenge where every single day in October you draw something. Having done Inktober for the last two years, I have a ton of tips to help you improve your art, but also have a ton of information to share with you about how you can use October, this challenge, to build your online community, how you can use it to share what you're passionate about and to share your science, and also by the end of October, how you can really, really improve your art skills but also build a community of like-minded people to share that with, which I think in 2020 is very needed. <laughs> so if you're a scientist, an artist, or anyone just interested in the oceans or science in general, then stay tuned and watch this video because you're gonna learn how to get the most out of this October art challenge. <laughs> done Inktober for the last two years. That was not as smooth as I would like. So I have done Inktober for the last two years and does it hold a special place in my heart because it is a fantastic month to get to know people, to build an online community. Now, I don't know about you, but 2020, online community has been pretty important. As someone who has spent a lot of this year alone, having a place, an outlet online to meet new people, to engage with people that have the same hobbies and interests as me has been invaluable. And that is why this year I am extra, extra excited about the possibilities of drawing every day in October and sharing that with you. So usually for this art challenge, I like to draw funny little comics, but this year is the first time I'm not doing that. And I'm also changing it up because it's gonna be the first year I release a prompt list, my own list that you at home can follow along with and share your art with me as we draw together every single day in October. You can see both the sketchbook tours of my October in the linked playlist above, and I'm just gonna discuss with you quickly why I'm choosing to not do comics this year. Productivity in 2020 has probably, for most people, hit an all-time low. And I usually come up with these comics when I'm really busy, when I'm rushing from one meeting to another, when I'm in the lab having to do loads of work every day and my brain just ticks over in the background and an idea will pop in my head that I can put on my phone and usually late at night when I got home I would draw up the comic. Now that isn't happening this year. And it's important to bear in mind that even if you've done Inktober before, if you've never done it, that this year might be slightly different. Our productivity levels have changed and also the space in our brain for creativity has changed. Part of my brain has definitely filled up with far too much news and has taken away from that space that maybe would have been a creative outlet. But not only has it inspired me to make a prompt list so that we can join together as a community more, which is I'll talk about more as this video goes on, but also I've come up with a really awesome and cool idea that hopefully you guys will like, which either you can follow along with, or you can pick a different medium or different way to do Inktober, whatever you want to do. So, what am I doing? I am going to do rock pool Polaroids. Okay, what? <laughs> I have cut up a lot of pieces of paper that look like giant Polaroids. The reason I don't wanna use a sketchbook, the reason I wanna do this, is first of all, the hashtag that I wanna use is Rockpoolaroid, which is amazing. <laughs> and having a unique hashtag that means that we can follow along together as the community, but also I needed an outlet where I can just chill out, relax, listen to a podcast, Speaking of podcasts, actually, can I do a little bit of a plug here? 
I'm actually on my very first podcast as of tomorrow, so out on the 28th of September, and it's with Journaling with Nature, who is done by Beth and Burton, and it's one of my favourite podcasts. It's all about the wonders of experiencing nature through the medium of art, by journaling, by note-taking. It's a really honest, funny, and amazing, I think, hour-long conversation. It, it was a really, really great time to hear from Bethan, who is a, a fantastic artist, a fantastic journaler, and to talk more about kind of my journey into getting into doing marine biology, getting to talk about our oceans and how important, you know, art and science is to me. So if you want to know a bit more about me and about my work and what I do, then head over to watch Bethan's uh, podcast, Journaling with Nature. I will link it down below and I'm really excited for it to come up tomorrow and I can't kind of wait to share it with you guys, which is why I'm sharing it a day early. But I also needed to limit my time. If you're inside every day, it could be tempting to get carried away, to pick too much, to think you have more time to do it, but actually limiting myself to a set size every single day is really gonna help me make sure I'm hitting that goal and I'm uh, gonna be successful because it is a challenge. It is 31 days of drawing, it is carving out time for 31 days that you wouldn't have all ordinarily carved out and it's definitely not going to be easy so making sure that whatever you pick is manageable which is why before I used to pick small sketchbooks as well because that just helped me not get too ambitious which would ultimately leave me to not completing the challenge. idea of not completing the challenge I'm gonna give you a quick sneak peek of exactly what a rock pool Leroyd will look like now people might think this is cheating and I will probably include what I've painted in advance as one of the prompts in the challenge but I want to say do this challenge as best that you can do it do not feel pressure to completely follow and I suppose stick to the rules I know that there are points in October where I am going to be unbelievably busy. And does that mean that I'm not going to take part in the challenge or does that mean I'm gonna jeopardize that important work that I have to do by trying to stay up late to draw every day? No. What it does mean is that you can prep, which is why I am releasing this video a few days before the October challenge so that maybe if you know you're gonna be busy, you could start a little bit earlier you don't want to do that that's fair enough stick to those rules and if you think that's cheating well I'm sorry but I'm being realistic I'm still gonna paint almost every day and I'm gonna try and paint every single day but I'm not gonna set myself up for failure <laughs> so I, I just want to show you what exactly a rock Polaroid is so that you can see what I'm trying to do give you a bit of a sneak preview so that you can hopefully get even more excited for coming along and joining in and if you want to do this then this, I suppose, is what I'm going for and, and what you could look like. So this is one of my rock Polaroids. <gasps> okay, I'm gonna put it down now. No more sneak previews for you. The great thing about this being pictures as well is that you can use pictures as references, as inspiration. And on my website, I have hundreds, if not almost thousands of photos of marine creatures that you can find on this list. A species in every group of this list will either be on my website and there'll be tons of photos on there or there will be videos of them on my many 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 hours of footage that I have of marine species whether it's in the wild or from aquariums or from drawing in my sketchbook. I will have covered it somewhere on my YouTube channel and I will link above now to some of the playlists of the the groups of videos that I have. You are free to use those pictures as inspiration and as references to comment on my videos and say, you know, this is what I'm drawing, oh, this bit of footage is really cool, I'm trying to capture that moment through art. I would absolutely be honored and love to see you kind of 
you know, wanting to spend your time painting my video footage or from my photos. So please tag me in that, let me know, and that resource is there for you to use and for this community that hopefully will form over the month of October to use and to utilise and just take forward and make even better through the medium of art. So, here is the prompt list. It is 31 days of ocean creatures that you can draw, or groups of ocean creatures. Specifically, because it's rock Polaroid, every creature group that I have named on here, you can find rock pooling. That's because this channel is all about making marine biology more accessible, bringing the shore from your screens to your literal fingertips, where all you need is a pair of wellies to go out, find, explore, and experience these incredible creatures. But I know that not everyone goes rock pooling, and I know that the marine world is so incredible that limiting it just to rock pools might seem not as interesting to everyone. It's interesting to me, and I will certainly advocate for that. But each group of species that I've picked, you can also find not only rock pooling, but around the world and throughout the oceans. So things like elasmobranchs are sharks, so you can draw a shark. You can find soft corals in the UK on the rocky shores, but you can find the amazing corals of the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. You could draw corals on that day. There is a whole range of species that you can draw, whatever interests you, and I'm really excited to see which species in those groups that you guys pick and that you are excited and interested by. leads us into why the community aspect of this challenge is so important. I want to see your guys, I want to see what you're drawing, I want to see what species you're putting out there, and I want to see ex your excitement about the marine world. For the next 31 days during October, I am going to be active on social media. I'm going to be seeing your artwork, sharing it, I'm going to be there to help motivate you every day to make sure that you're doing the artwork that you want to do and to give you hints and tips as we go. You can follow me on Twitter or Instagram where I'm going to be active on social medias every day and you can also comment below it in all of my YouTube videos which is where I'm probably most active in the comments so make sure you're commenting on there too so that we can have a conversation and you can see my Inktober journey because each week I will also be putting out a art challenge video where I time lapse the art I'm drawing, talking about how it's going and kind of saying who's inspiring me. I'm really interested in the marine life in oceans and that's what I want to share, that's what I want to put forward. I mean, I always think that the more people that are sharing art, sharing science about the oceans, it's going to just increase the amount of people that are inspired to protect it. And that's why I will continually and always share the wonderful world of marine biology and marine life. But I know there are amazing other scientists out there that want to learn to communicate their science, great artists that are interested in science, and I want to share your work too. So if you're looking to participate in this art challenge, but you don't particularly want to do my prompt list or marine life, then still tag me in your hashtags and your artwork, and I want to be able to share and show your passions and interests as well, and use my platform as much as possible to just you know, build this great scientific communication community during the month of October. I know Hannah, who is a great artist and great scientific communicator, is putting her own prompt list together. So I will link to her Twitter handle here. But if you know of anyone else doing anything like that or other hashtags or just doing great art, then please let me know in the comments below and I will start to share that as well. This is going to be an absolutely fantastic month. It'll be hard work, but by the end of it, I promise you your art skills will have massively improved as well as your scientific communication. With every single post, you can post a short fact, 
a little funny tidbit of information, or just use your artwork to convey the beauty of a species, or a species someone wouldn't have heard of, or just, you know, learn something about that species yourself. Learn about it by drawing it, by observing, you know, what it looks like, comparing that to the species you draw before and working out what that looks like, and just writing that down and sharing that with the world. Noticing, you know, how many legs does this crab have compared to that crab, and seeing if there's a difference. Because if you start to look behind the science of those observations, you'll quickly start to learn a lot of the basis of marine biology. Me personally, every post that I do is going to come with some scientific information, so make sure to subscribe and follow all my social media accounts to, you know, learn as much about sea life as possible. We can use this as a great opportunity to merge the worlds of art and science together, to communicate, to inspire and to share. I also want to point out if you're worried about doing this art challenge and that your art style or your artistic skills are not good enough, I want to stop you right there. Do not do yourself that disservice. Every single blank piece of paper that you spend your time and energy and creativity turning into a piece of art is time that has been well spent and is your own artwork, it's yours, it's nobody else's, it hasn't come from anyone else but you. And it is an incredible thing to be able to do, whether you're drawing like stick, literal like stick figures or just outlines, art is about spending your time choosing something that is interesting to you, that is creative, that is meaningful to you. So whether you're drawing stick figures or doing classical paintings and anything in between. It is a fantastic thing to be able to share and is something that I'm really looking forward to seeing. So do not do yourself a disservice and do not start this art challenge thinking that your artwork is not good enough to share with the public because I guarantee you it is, it has to be, it's come from you and it is important that you share it. Not only that, you're gonna improve absolutely so much during this month and you'll get tips and tricks from people by sharing your artwork. We can all learn to improve each other's artwork just by learning things of how other people do things creatively. And that is a great experience to learn and grow together. So to finish up this video, if you want to join in to my prompt list, if you use the hashtag rock Polaroid, I will be following that hashtag and sharing and commenting and getting to know everyone using that hashtag. If you're doing any other type of scientific art or just you want me to see your Inktober posts, then tag me at Marine Mumbles on Instagram or Twitter or comment the hashtag or the link to your video maybe on my YouTube comments below and I will check them out. If you have any questions, then comment below in this video and let's start a discussion. And I really, really look forward to seeing all of your artwork on October 1st, the first start of this October challenge. Good luck everyone, you're all going to be amazing and I can't wait to see your artwork, to learn new things and to just have a fantastic online month of positivity and community, which my god we need in 2020. Have a great week, I will see you on Wednesday, the day before October for another video and then I will definitely see you on Thursday because that is the 1st of October and the start of the challenge. Bye everyone.